Hi everyone, today I'm going to do a very brief intro of Flow Forecast. So Flow Forecast, in case you're wondering, was originally named because it was a deep learning library that we were using to forecast river flows around the United States. But recently we've found a utility for it in kind of all around deep learning for time series forecasting. So what, what this library does is it enables you to very easily try a, a wide assortment of model of deep learning models on any type of time series forecasting problem you might have. So let's look at, for instance, how we can use it. So we make the library very easy to integrate with Jupyter Notebooks so um, in Colab. So one of the easiest things you can do is you can just go get clone it um, right to the notebook and then, you know, ch there. There are different ways you can install it too. This is how my preferred way. The first thing you want to do in your flow forecast library is we feature native kind of integration with um, both weights and biases and Google Cloud Platform. So you can specify a model bucket, which is where your weights will automatically be saved from your trained models. Um, and then you can ex uh, basically say your environment, here it's Colab and your GCP project name. And just by supplying these and including one parameter in your configuration file, your weights will automatically be un uploaded there. So then going on the core of our framework is a configuration file. Here there's kind of some additional code because here we were looping through all the related rivers um, uh, and geolocations. So there is this additional code, but the core is essentially this config file, which can often be stored in JSON. And here in our configuration file, um, we define, so this actually hosts multiple model configurations we are using, but uh, since we have switched between them a lot, but for instance here, we define basically the model name. Um, here we, was a list of things we were pre-training on. Um, that isn't required, but essentially anything in your configuration file will be logged to weights and biases. So here's an early stopping parameter. So this means that if the model's performance doesn't improve after free epochs, it will stop automatically and restore the best weights too. Um, here are model parameters. So these are directly related to the model we're using. So if we're using a different model um, contained in flow forecast, which I'll show you in a second, um, it corresponds directly with to that, those model um, arguments that are required for it. So for instance, if we're using this model, we would supply these parameters in our configuration file. Um, then as we go down, we have data set parameters. So you can specify not just the data um, set, but the training file path, the test fl validation file path, and the test path. If, you're, if all your stuff is in one file, you can also specify the end of your training, the row number that's the end of your training, the row number that's the end of your validation. And you can also directly select the relevant columns for forecasting here. So here we're selecting you know, the cubic footage, the precipitation, the temperature, etc. In some of our other experiments, we're now working on for the COVID forecasting. These would be things like new cases, um, you know, weather and mobility data, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so here's the target column. We're trying to forecast the cubic footage here. Moving on down for the configuration file, we now just look at essentially our training parameters. Um, we're using, um, this is our criterion. These are our optimizers. Um, and we, we are logging to GCS, so this is where we defined up here. This says, yes, we will log, and those variables are defined. Um, if you hadn't defined those, you'd have to remove this, or this would throw an error. Um, we can include some optional tags, too, um, to make it easier to sort on weights and biases. And then moving down, we have our inference param, so we can uh, essentially specify a specific date time to start for an actual evaluation, and this will actually log a graph to weights and biases, 
which I'll show you in a second. Um, and yeah, as we move further down, you'll see, um, you know, the, the parameters for our inference are here. Uh, and then what you'll see here is we want to make it really easy to do like various types of transfer. So you can exclude weights and stuff like that there. Um, then we have this weights and biases sweep config. So our, our, our config will integrate with weights and biases. So here we're actually taking the weights that our configuration and some of the parameters we're supplying to it are from weights and biases. So we can sweep over and see like what combinations of sequence length, i.e. the history, the historical time steps, what, what lengths work and what lengths, uh, how many time steps to forecasting produces the best mean squared error. So if then we move over to weights and biases on the weights and biases site, which is called, um, we can then essentially view all of our different model results. So over here, this might take a second to load. Um, over here, essentially all of our runs will then be logged to these different projects. Um, so for instance, so for instance, um, here's our COVID forecasting. Um, again, like all of our models are in the parameters are logged here. So it's essentially really easy to sort and see which parameters are working best for your different time series forecasting experiments. So here's an example. Um, like I said, those graphs are logged automatically based on that date time start. So if there's a specific date time you wanna start from, um, then it will log all your relevant columns and also um, you know the predictions versus the actual result. Um, so, so, and then if we wanna forecast, see which parameters kind of resulted in the best results, um, we can you know use weights and biases suites of tools to, to, to do things like that. Um, but what I wanted to stress, I guess, is just for now is how, you know, integrated we are with these other tools. So, um, hope you enjoyed that brief tutorial. Um, we, we are also looking for contributors. As you can tell, our documentation is a bit outdated. Um, we are adding more and more models, but if you have a good deep learning time series forecasting model in PyTorch, um, that you want to contribute, it's it's very easy um, due to our framework. All you have to do is kind of make a pull request, um, include the PyTorch module, and then we would just add it to our model dict, and then it could be initialized with those parameters, kind of like any other model. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of the overview. All of our code is also tested. Um, I know this says failing here, but that's because we had to cancel that to a timeout. The most recent build actually has passed. So you can be sure that our code is always high quality and up to date. Um, so, so that's kind of an overview of our library. We hope that if you do have a time series forecasting problem, you'll, you'll, you'll use it and you'll also contribute back and maybe merge some of your models or uh, help add additional enhancements to our library. Um, again, that's Flow Forecast. It's entirely open source and on GitHub. And we've, it's already been used for quite a few different time series forecasting tasks. Um, obviously the river flow, which it was originally intended for, now the COVID forecasting. Um, and you know we're, we're eager to see what other use cases come out of the general community. Um, so let, let me know if you have any questions. And yeah, I, I really am eager to see um, what people use our library for. Thanks.